Let's talk about Venus in astrology. This planet gets a lot of classification about being like the planet of love and beauty and comfort and um, you know, just everything that is like sunshine and flowers, and it is those things. This is the planet that gives us our sensory interpretation and understanding of the beautiful, wonderful aspects of life. But this planet also has another side to it that oftentimes is not seen. Um, there are a lot of subtleties to the planet of Venus. It, does, it is also one of the planets that deals with subtlety and deals with um, environment as well, and sort of the creation, maintenance, and and um, experience of our environment and how we relate ourselves as well, the way that we relate to an environment, how we relate with people, how we um, sort of create energetic connections. This is also Saturn energy, um, but Venus deals a lot with the, um, you know, creation of lines with other people, how we automatically feel about other people, and its placement in the sign that it occupies in your birth chart or in somebody else's birth chart. Um, deals a lot with being able to know how these people relate not only to other people in their life, but to their own environment, to their own experience, and to their own selves as well. So Venus is not just about love and passion and sexuality. It is about how we relate and how we compare as well. It is a planet that, um, yes, deals with beauty, and, and as you would read in most other, um, you know, places or hear from most other people, it is, you know, a planet of love, beauty, and as well wisdom in a way too, and has a strategic component as well. Um, but yes, I find Venus to be the environment determinant in, a, in an individual's birth chart. I find Venus to determine how people attract things in, how people pull things in, what types of experiences they pull in, what types of people they pull in, and what they can expect in the longevity of a relationship, whether we're talking um, platonic relationship, romantic relationship, family relationship, uh, relationship with self, relationship with environment, relationship with the home. All of these things can be indicated by the placement of Venus in the birth chart. So welcome back, everyone. Thank you for coming to my channel, and I hope that you're excited to dive into another long video in the fashion of the Ascendant video and the Moon video that I've done over the last year on my channel. I will link both of those videos in the top right-hand corner as well as below in the description box if you would like to see about the Ascendant or the Moon. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you can, like one, two, three, hit the thumbs up so YouTube will get this video out there and so that other people can learn more about Venus and the placement of Venus in their own chart. And if you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. It's a great way to uh, support and see more videos about this in the future. I plan to make a video in this style for each planet. So if you hit the like button and the subscribe button, it will let me know that you enjoy this series and you would like to learn about Mercury, Mars, um, Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Pluto, Uranus, Neptune through the signs as well, Midheaven, Nodes, Chiron. Um, I would like to do all of those. So if you would like that, be sure to hit the like button below and uh, comment below which Venus sign you are as well. So the way that this video will work, I'll put timestamps below in the description box, um, but I will speak a little bit about Venus itself before going into the signs, and then I will go through each and indiv each individual Venus sign so that you guys can learn more about your own love language and your own relationship potential. Okay, guys, let's dive in. To touch on Venus as a planet a bit more and its sort of archetypal representation astrologically, um, so it is what is not inside, okay? Venus is not an interior planet, like for example with like the moon, um, it's all about what's inside, right? It's all about what's in the, in the, inside the individual. We look to Venus in the birth chart to see what is outside the individual to a degree, um, and this can depend on where it's placed in the chart. Certainly, if you had a Venus in the fourth house, um, it would uh, make this a bit different, but I see Venus in a birth chart as what people pull in experientially. Um, so, for example, a really benefically placed like Venus in Sagittarius or Venus in uh, Taurus or Libra, it's home signs. Um, would indicate that somebody pulls in more optimistic situations and has a bit more luck with what they just wonder upon in life. Um, whereas Venus that is placed in like difficult positions, you know, like um, uh, Venus in Scorpio, Venus in Virgo, 
its two debilitated signs, um, these will indicate that the individual wonders upon situations that require a lot of uh, discernment and um, and thought, okay, on, you know, why am I pulling this in? What am I working with? Um, so in this way, Venus has a rulership over money as well and material well-being, because again, this is outside the individual. This is um, something that is uh, a foreign sort of inanimate object that has a direct impact on livelihood. This is what Venus is all about as well. Um, so Venus will indicate somebody's material wealth, and it will indicate um, typically their pay grade, their, you know, as quote-unquote their material class in society. Venus has a lot to do with birthright, hereditary rights. There is a hereditary, um, especially if you, if you have like a Venus Saturn, Venus Pluto, or Venus Jupiter connection, there's typically inheritance or um, some type of inherited reputation or inherited um, material that uh, is indicated by Venus. Um, so, for example, a lone Venus or a Venus that doesn't really contact anything would represent a blank slate or somebody who is making their own way in the world and somebody who doesn't really have a lot of um, other people invested in what they're doing, which can be a great blessing or a difficulty, depending on how you look at it. Whereas a Venus that's really crowded or really connected to a lot of other planets in a birth chart will indicate somebody who... Um, is like represented by many or many people have their stake in this individual or perhaps they're not so independent or financially rely on other people or, or other situations to uh, fund them or give them also a sense of inner well-being so venus um definitely indicates how other people are coming into our lives what other types of people are around us mainly by by what i'm talking about by how it channels through other planets so venus is a planet and there are a few other planets like this that um is fl a flexible sort of um neutral sometimes that gets activated by especially the outer planets so how jupiter saturn uranus or pluto connect with venus makes a big difference on how this planet shows itself. So even regardless of what sign it's in, if you've got like a Venus-Pluto opposition, it's going to really put a um, sort of pseudo-sexual vibe onto Venus and make you experience the Venus energy more so through um, maybe even difficult or traumatic experiences uh, relating to, um, you know, the, the nocturnal aspects of life. Whereas if you have like a, for example, a Venus-Jupiter conjunction, this indicates safety and protection and also um, luck or even gambling ventures that turn out well, um, yet at the same time it can indicate um, softness or gullibility sometimes as well too. Um, so nothing is ever perfect, whereas again that Venus-Pluto opposition might indicate, you know, that strategic person who you're not going to get anything past them, you know, they are sharp and they are on it all the time due to their experiences. So, so again, as astrologers, we might look at Venus- Jupiter conjunction more favorably as if it's more benevolent because it does have an easier time in certain ways, but it also can kind of get... Um, um, gullible to the more difficult aspects of life sometimes too, whereas the Venus-Pluto opposition, again these are hypotheticals, um, is something that would be seen much more difficultly with a lot more traumatic experiences. At the same time, it's not so gullible to things, so everything has a uh, positive or negative component to it. And as we all know, Venus uh, definitely writes our love language. Venus will indicate how we operate in a relationship, our needs in a relationship, our wants, our aspirations in a relationship, and how we, um, you know, uh, work with relationships in general. It will also indicate, as I said earlier, how, what types of careers are most suited or what types of, you know, um, wealth or material generating opportunities are uh, best. So it's really great to look at your Venus personally and work with it. Okay, Venus is a planet you can work with so easily and give your, yourself and your life much more happiness just by working around Venus because it can be a bit of an insatiable energy as well. So for example, if you're working against your Venus, for example, you maybe have a very glamorous Venus in Leo but you've decided that you want to work as like a private investigator or something and you're very below board and never seen and never 
um, really uh, recognized in any way. This would be working against your Venus and all aspects of your life as a Venus and Leo private investigator would start to feel uncomfortable. You wouldn't find much love. You wouldn't find much recognition because it's not harmonious. Um, and then as another hypothetical, say you're a Venus in Pisces, um, you know, needing a lot of emotional recognition, needing a lot of emotional uh, comforts in your life and you live maybe a very austere life of like chastity and like maybe you're a monk or you want to go into like an abbey or live like a religious aus religiously austere life this would not be compatible because although there is like a thought with Venus and Pisces of having like a religious type of outlay, um, you're not getting any type of emotional uh, connection perhaps. So it starts to make things feel uncomfortable. And th this is one of the main reasons that people experience a lot of discomfort in their lives is because they're not working with their Venus. And, and th this is why astrology is such a great tool for us is because we can see and we can look at how Venus is placed and see, okay, this is just what I need more of. Um, let's add more of that in. Um, and it's really that simple with Venus. Again, Venus is not a highly complex or highly layered planet. It's just something that's kind of a reality, though. And it's something that's like, okay, if you've got that Venus in Leo, you probably need to be getting your hair done and you need to be getting your picture taken and you need to be interacting with many people and laughing a lot. And that's just that. And give it to yourself and you will get more always. There's a simplicity about it. Also, uh, traditional astrology does talk about having an elevated Venus versus a um, non-elevated Venus. So a Venus through house one through six will indicate more. So this is Venus in first, second, third, fourth, fifth or sixth house. It will indicate that your beauty comes more behind closed doors or that you see a lot of your beauty um only with close people or like close, uh, this isn't always the case, but th this is a traditional message. Um, it's more underground. It's more behind closed doors where you find your most enjoyment. And then if it's above the horizon, you know, house seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, or 12, it's going to be more public. You're going to have a more, um, public understanding of your happiness and a more social charismatic understanding of your happiness um, of course there are other depending factors but the status of venus being above or below the horizon makes a big difference in how it operates and um yeah so again below the horizon you need to recharge you need to um, be enjoying comfort in your own home and close relationships trustable trustworthy relationships um, and then above the horizon it's basically introvert introvert versus extrovert there. Introvert for Venus below the horizon, extrovert for Venus above the horizon. The last thing I'll say about Venus before we get into uh, each sign is that it does really show what we can do to heal quickly from something. You know, if we have a heartbreak or if we have um, something that has gone wrong in our lives, you can really look to your Venus placement to fix that and augment that really quickly. Um, say you've got um, Venus in Capricorn and you go through a difficult breakup by maybe finding a new career or working more than you ever have before because again capricorn is the sign of work and career you can heal and channel that energy through maybe creating a great business or um maybe even gardening or working with your hands in some way basically like for a venus in capricorn the answer would not be to lay in bed all day crying or to be like resting too much on the other side of a breakup everybody needs rest but um whereas for a venus in cancer it would be the other way around it would be like okay we don't need to be overworking ourselves we need to be resting and prioritizing that more than anything um so there's really a clear and concise way of healing and going about your life that you can see with the venus placement it has actually a saturnian nature sometimes um in a very much more minor way and especially if you've got saturn aspecting your venus it's almost like a pattern that it sets and it sets like a like what you need to do if things go wrong or what you need to do if you want to be very successful with something it's very clear and very concise okay um, and on that note guys i'm going to go ahead and get into venus through the signs again the timestamps are below so let's start off directly with venus in aries Okay, Venus in Aries. So uh, right off the bat, we're in a tough Venus sign. It's not the worst or most difficult Venus sign, but it has a few uh, struggles um, because it is a kind of a traditional debilitation. It is opposite of Venus's home sign of Libra. So it automatically um, shows a bit of trial in the love sector. Um, there are ways where Venus in Aries can do really well in relationships and um, 
find especially a lot of enjoyment in athletics or competition or um, anything that has to do with moving the body. Um, but oftentimes there can be sexual frustration with Venus and Aries, not quite to the extent of Venus and Virgo or Venus and Scorpio. Um, but nonetheless, it's like they can't quite find um, expression in this area until after the first Saturn return. So the first 30 years of life, there might be some like repression or inability to find uh, true compatibility in a relationship early on. And that it's like it creates a momentum, right? This is a Venus sign that deals a lot with momentum. Like they're always generating energy, very, very active, um, not needing so much sleep, not needing so much um, rest or rejuvenation as other signs. Um, so they can do more than other people. They make great employees, um, but sometimes they can also be taken advantage of in that way because they're so quick and can do so much that they end up doing more than their fair share with a lot of things. That's really the main thing about Venus and Aries is it does indicate having to maybe do a bit more than your fair share or having to um, really generate a lot of energy for other people. Um, what I think that this uh, Venus sign shines in is in um, leadership, actually. This is a good leadership role because you're, especially if what you're leading needs to pioneer something or needs to uh, push further into something, you can be uh, really seen well in leadership, um, at least early on. Uh, as a new leader, Venus and Aries will do you well. You don't want to stagnate in the same position for too long, though. So this one deals a lot uh, with career, actually, and not all the Venus signs do. But Venus and Aries has that cardinal fire Venus energy. It does kind of hone the beauty energy of Venus into like something that is utilizable or just usable, um, which is a flaw sometimes. Like it wants to maybe turn beauty into economy or beauty into, um, you know, something that um, is more more utilitarian, okay? So there's something about pioneering a utilitarian version of Venus, which makes the energy a bit frustrated. So in layman's terms, as a Venus and Aries, you want to kind of um, rest things a little bit, take the leadership roles, but keep on mm, keeping, keeping things as simple as possible. Um, also watch out for impulsivity in relationships or demanding things from relationships, your words or your actions can come off as a bit, um, you know, like in Game of Thrones where like Daenerys like burns down King's Landing. It's a little bit like that with Venus and Aries sometimes. There can be like a temper thing or you might see yourself as doing something really great or like your temper is really warranted, but it's kind of lethal to other people. So there can be anger management with this Venus sign as well. Um, but especially if they have a Mars fire sign, it can really be offset and become something that's more of like a slow burn. So how can you turn with a Venus and Aries, you want your energy to be more of a slow burn and more endurance oriented than like a quick rush. So if you're pursuing a relationship or if you're pursuing a career, you want to be metered because you can seem a little bit, um, you know, volatile in how you output energy. But once a Venus and Aries really works on that and really gets that under control, um, they're very sought after. Um, and usually the older that they get, they get more and more sought after when it comes to career or relationships. But again, but they have a, also a vibrancy in youth as well. So these people um, might be really favored by some um, people in higher established positions just for their humor or just for their um, expression to some degree. Um, and the sadness within that is maybe they don't easily get recognized for their actual hard work or contribution. It's like, oh, you're wearing that color today. Let me recognize you for that. Where during the whole day you've done like all these difficult things and that doesn't really see anything, but you get through nonetheless, okay, as Venus and Aries. So um, an interesting Venus sign, I would say that it needs to... Um, really not hold back with love at the same time. Like try to not, if somebody asks you out on a date as a Venus and Aries, and as long as they're like, you know, a safe, you know, sound person, I would go for it. You know, watch out for turning people down too much or for, um, you know, not trying anything. This is a sign that has to be a little bit impulsive when it comes to love. Um, safe, of course, but impulsive to a degree. And that just has to be so sometimes. 
Okay, let's talk about Venus in Taurus. Um, this is one of the best placements for Venus. This is one of its home signs. So Venus in Taurus automatically indicates some degree of wealth, some degree of um, beauty as well. These people are usually very beautiful, very attractive, um, good skin, okay? Um, typically quite ageless and also... Um, like if there are any, the skin is indicated with Venus and Taurus. So it's usually very healthy and you have like good genes when it comes to the skin, but you want to take care of the skin as well. Like make sure you're watching out for too much UV exposure. Also the types of water that you're bathing in, make sure it's all clean, make sure it's all um, not too chemical as well. Watch out for putting too many chemical things on the skin. Um, but other than that, it's a very wholesome, very healthy, good health is attributed to Venus in Taurus, but it can tend to be a little bit bigger, okay? So tall people or uh, more um, weighty people as well, even if they're very thin, which can also be the case, they're heavy. These are heavy people, um, and it's sort of like the scale might defy the look as well. So you might have somebody who's very thin who weighs a lot more than they look like, and that's just a little fun fact. Um, but also, um, it's easy to become overweight. It's easy to also have obesity with Venus and Taurus. Um, so you want to make sure that the diet is healthy. Another possibility for Venus and Taurus is eating disorder if it's aspected by like Pluto or Saturn or anything. So you want to make sure that you're keeping that with um, seen to some degree. There can be like desperation with Venus and Taurus for appearances or for uh, status or for, um, you know, being seen as you know, somebody who's wealthy. And that's why it can tend to be overweight because for many, many uh, millennia, humanity has defined wealth as having a bit more weight um, because the peasants would starve to death and be skinny. So if you're like noble or of the upper class, you would be able to possibly have a bit more weight on you, but the times have changed and now we all want to be skinny. Um, so, but naturally this sign is still quite, um, you know, well proportioned and you know for and that's for the men and the women who have venus in taurus they're just they have bigger proportions taller um bigger heavier it just is um it's fixed earth energy so that it also indicates um taste as well so uh tasting really nice things having really nice food maybe really nice coffees teas indulgences perfumes um, it's, it really attracts in just a, a surrounding environment that works. This is like the penultimate empress energy in the tarot. So we are being surrounded by luxury sometimes as Venus and Taurus, or being surrounded by, uh, people who want to see us thriving and people who want to see us, um, becoming bigger and heavier. And I mean, energetically, so expanding and, um, you know, becoming so strong there's sort of a Jupiterian energy in this one as well, even though Jupiter doesn't have any rulership over Taurus. Um, it gives that same almost like Sagittarian bigness, expansiveness, you know what I mean? Um, so these people will do well with Sagittarius people. Uh, there will be a great ability to relate and uh, expand vicariously. Um, again, as a Venus and Taurus, another worry is can be overspending or um, not thinking enough about money. Like usually money just comes in typically. And of course, that could be different depending on the chart. Um, but we have to also watch out for, you know, just burning money away with this placement or um, not having any clue about where it's coming from or where it's going. There can be a detachment with Venus and Taurus from like the nitty gritty like bank statements or um, or even like there can be tax issues or debt issues just out of detachment. Um, so as, as a Venus and Taurus, maybe with a stronger place Saturn, who is very keen on accounting and can keep all of those ducks in a row. These are like the Venus and Taurus who could be like CEOs, own some of the best companies in the world, you know, be mega wealthy. That's, that's um, a prospect for this sign. And sometimes with that energy, there was abject poverty at some point in time. Oftentimes, like, you know, a moon or Venus in an earth sign shows poverty at some point in time in life, but then that changes at another chapter to, like, the complete opposite extreme. So that is possible, but it's more likely that Venus and Taurus, unless it's harshly aspected by, by like, Saturn or Pluto, um, or Uranus even, it shows that typically there's a constant amount of wealth and prosperity. It's kind of like Nine of Pentacles, the Empress energy in the tarot. 
Also, the personality is beautiful with Venus and Taurus. Funny, humorous people, always be humorous, always be lighthearted in, when it's appropriate at least, and um, people will not be able to have enough of you. People can also become addicted to Venus and Taurus, and you can see like weird like abuse patterns or... Um, stalker you can even see yeah you can you can see stalking with venus and taurus like uh these people can be stalked um they don't tend to be stalkers but um they can be like followed or um, people might be sizing you up in public or basically the creeps of the world can sometimes like see venus and taurus and like really show themselves for who for the fact that they're a creep so if especially if you're a venus and taurus woman you want to really make sure that you're not like out walking walking the streets at like four o'clock in the morning or in the bad part of town or alone walking like you're susceptible to people because of the beauty and because of the uh sort of abundant aura that you have like there are bad people in the world and some people can like try to um you know be bad with that so you you just have to be safe and you want to not really and and that's just about common sense too that's not even just for this venus sign but again there are some other venus signs like for example maybe um like a, a venus in virgo for example that's a bit say not necessarily venus in virgo but um this is so dependent on other things some people are quite immune to like being stalked or abused or attacked or something like that um but venus in taurus it's just so nice people like want to um connect with it in some way and um on the more like good side of that you know getting out of those more difficult uh situations um you can really find a great partner you can really find a great relationship where you shine this venus sign can be a great homemaker and it can also be great for childbearing again it's like you give good genes to your children and childbirth um for the women is typically um okay um again there are other things that can make that different but childbirth is usually enjoyable and safe and not like too difficult um for the men with venus and taurus they can also be like very um like a homemaker type of father and very fertile as well like it's very easy for them to have children um the men and the women and um it's very easy for them to um you know, create a family, and it's like a year passes in a nice relationship, and they've completely changed their life to be very family-oriented. So it does tend to indicate a big family as well. Okay, let's talk about Venus in Gemini. So Venus in Gemini kind of takes all of those mercurial concepts, you know, the, um, the mind, the communication, logic, and it sort of makes those things Venusian. So Venus in Gemini tends to have a very um, vivid mind frame. They're always, you know, maybe hyper analyzing things. Um, they enjoy the process of analysis and are very uh, smart, very intelligent. Um, this kind of changes up the nature of Venus a little bit um, because um, on one hand, they might uh, not have as much time for relationships or might not have as much time to even think about romance as much um, or it's all that they can think about there's no in between it's like a uh, black or white when it comes to their romantic endeavors um, venus and gemini they can get really focused and almost be a little bit formulaic in the way that they pursue people like how am i going to get this ultimate relationship how am i going to find it and then they, they can kind of clip their own wings a little bit in that way by um you know, uh, they're not really letting the universe give them things. They're kind of thinking, how am I going to get it? How am I going to have this? How am I going to do it? And in that way, sometimes you can see a tendency to um, almost just overthink what is needed or what is um, being sought after for them. The best thing that Venus and Gemini can do to find happiness in love and happiness in um, their experience is to um, detach a little bit from the the thought of what is needed or what is deserved um, and to really maybe focus their minds on um, the solar plexus because the Venus in the air sign it kind of cools things down a little bit it kind of um, maybe extinguishes or blows out the inner flame or the the inner desires that they have so this sign, uh, Venus sign, becomes most attractive when it is pursuing something or when it is really working through desire. Um, they will tend to meet their significant others or, you know, soulmate people. They, they will meet them when, when the Venus in Gemini is 
pursuing something that they absolutely love. So really this Venus sign is more so about um, pursuits and um, it's more so channeling out in individual experiences. And and this is kind of an odd thing about this sign is because again, Venus uh, Gemini is the sign of the twins. So it's two people. So you might kind of expect with this Venus sign that, you know, it just creates this incredible soulmate union, but it's almost more like the people within or the separate distinct aspects of the individual coming together and merging with that Venus concept. Um, so yeah, these people with Venus and Gemini have to really um, enjoy what they love. What do I mean by that? They have to find what they love. They have to um, maybe be a bit unconventional as well. Um, because again, I don't see this Venus sign very often working your like very typical nine to five office job. Um, that works for some signs, but this uh, Venus and Gemini takes on an unconventional streak and it really needs to, um, it, it really needs to be doing something a little bit different from the herd. Cause again, this is like the Gemini Sagittarius aspect, which is very favorable for Venus to fall under because, um, for example, like Venus and Sagittarius is a great, great placement because, um, it, it is in Jupiter's sign. And Venus and Jupiter have a mythos about benevolence, abundance, and luck. So this is a lucky Venus sign as well. Um, although it gets sometimes a little bit too much in its head about how it's going to be lucky, how it's going to maybe uh, formulate and put framework around all of these concepts that are very like magical seeming, you know, like the, the concept of luck, the concept of prosperity, who gets what, how does the universe decide which individual, you know, wins the lottery or which individual, you know, is lucky enough to, um, you know, find their soulmate. And Venus and Gemini really operates through these concepts and it gets a bit too formulaic and that's really its only fault. Um, it's a very attractive Venus sign. Um, again, people are very attracted to Venus and Gemini and they have a great way with words. So they communicate with uh, great attractive qualities. They, they, um, their voices are very attractive to people. Um, and also their, their face structure tends to be good. Um, v, uh, Gemini rules, um, the parts of the body that there are like two of, so like the eyes, the ears, um, the hands, you know, there, there is a dexterity with Venus and Gemini. So pursuing dexterity will be a good way for them to channel energy and, um, you know, maybe being able to use their dexterity in relationships as well. So creating things, uh, for their partner or, you know, uh, sewing, knitting, creating jewelry, um, even like composing really wonderful messages or writing notes to their partner um, is a great way for this Venus sign to find love and to be loved and adored. They need to always have a project though. This Venus sign should never like, for example, start a relationship and stop doing what they've been doing, like sacrificing all of themselves to a relationship or losing themselves in another person is a really big red flag um, because again this venus sign finds most of its true enjoyment um, more so like outside of a relationship is really not the most um advisable advisable sign to you know think that the relationship or the love is going to just solve everything they need that um, they really want that as well um, cause there's a, a really big drive for love, affection, and even reproduction with Venus and Gemini, but, um, they have to have something else outside of it. Uh, it's a multi-layered sign. It's a multi-layered placement where you need to have the career. You probably need to have the relationship. You need to have the hobby. You need to be traveling. You need to be doing many things, merging many things, consolidating many things in life, combining them together. Okay. Um, but other than that, um, I can't think of anything that's tr too bad off about Venus and Gemini. Again, it's on a very positive, lucky axis, and it will um, always attract some amount of benevolence. But again, the only fear is losing themselves in relationships. They can't do that um, because they. it's hard to sometimes get back what they sacrifice to somebody else. Um, so if you can find somebody who also has that quality as a Venus in Gemini, somebody else who needs to have their own alone time, their own independence, their own, you know, projects, and then you come together and maybe you even like can be in, in partnership or build an empire or uh, work together to make each other's projects that much stronger. There needs to be something aside from the relationship that is focused on as a Venus in Gemini in a relationship. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Venus in Cancer. 
I love this Venus sign. This Venus sign is very um, coquettish. It's very flirty. It's very uh, wanted and uh, needed by other people. Um, there is a great uh, possibility for creating a home, for being a homemaker with this Venus sign. Again, whether you're male or female, this is typically the stay-at-home mom or the stay-at-home dad or the um, or I mean, they, they can have great careers and great, um, you know, success in career because again, Venus in a cardinal sign indicates the ability to make money or the ability to find prosperity and seek it out, you know, find it. It's not really given to you, but you can seek it out. Um, that is indicated with Venus and Cancer, but they tend to maybe invest all of their earnings or all of their prosperity into the home or into having the perfect utopian like a uh, traditional home. So this is like the theme of white picket fence. This is like the American dream or even like older ancient traditional ways of living. It's not necessarily American, but um, maybe really looking back into your lineage, say that you have, um, I, I don't know, like uh, ancient Asian roots. If you were living in America, for example, now with ancient Asian roots, you might create like an ancient Asian house or household or something with a Venus in Cancer, despite living in a different kind of society or culture. So you you always, as a Venus in Cancer, can be rewarded by looking back into the li into the lineage and seeing how things were done a few hundred years ago or how things were looking or living uh, many generations ago. There's a generational energy about this Venus sign because it does put the energy of the moon into Venus, which is very, very benevolent and abundant. The moon and Venus are very harmonious energies. So this uh, Venus sign will attract prosperity in any field, um, and they can really succeed anywhere, and that can be a frustrating thing to them. <laughs> it can lead them to being a touch indecisive just because it's like, I mean, I know that I could go into that field and make money, or I know that I could, you know, start that relationship and, and turn that, you know, there's a Midas touch with this placement, also with Venus in Leo. This actually Venus in uh, Gemini, Cancer, and Leo, this side of the zodiac for Venus, it has a bit of a Midas touch. Um, so there's an ability to go anywhere and create something golden, and that can be hard a hard capability to wield because you can see that some people want to take advantage of that. Some people, you know, feel entitled to that. Like, okay, come into my life and turn, you know, my house into this, like, ancient, like, dynastic, ancestral, incredible, <laughs> you know, um, world, like, separate world from the outside world. I want that. Give that to me. Um, and likewise, these Venus and Cancer especially can be susceptible to gold diggers, especially if they maybe have family assets or inheritance, which is likely with Venus and Cancer, unless it's, like, maybe really connected to um, a harsh Saturn aspect or something. Even that could indicate inheritance, but it might be, you know, really tied up or really complicated. Um, but yeah, there's always some, even if they're not maybe inheriting family money, there's like a secret that they inherit from the family, or there is a way of making life easier and building up a homely type of power that is inherited, even if that's not in the form of money. Um, so everybody wants a piece of that, you know, everybody wants to, um, you know, have the keys to the guest bedroom of your house, for example. Um, you know, everybody traveling all around says, okay, well, I know this Venus and Cancer person who um, has this one wonderful home, and, and you know, if I'm, if I'm passing through, I'm going to stop and sleep on their couch, and that, that's just that. And um, that can become like a, a kind of a nice cycle, actually, for some Venus and Cancer. You know, it might be really good if you have like a really, you know, spacious house, and maybe you're single and living alone, to allow friends to come and stay and almost turn your house into a hotel. That could be an interesting thing. Uh, owning a hotel, for example, as a Venus and Cancer, starting a hotel, starting a rental business, um, real estate is a great field for these people, um, you know, uh, Airbnb, something like that could, would just be like a, you know, a cash flow for Venus and Cancer. And also it would give to them some like, um, enjoyment of other culture or enjoyment of new type, types of people because this, this uh, Venus sign and, and this can change depending on the other placements of the chart like for example if you're a sad if you're sorry you couldn't be a Sagittarius with a Venus in cancer but if you were a Leo with Venus in cancer um, you might be more like travel oriented or more cultural or more like you know yeah I'm gonna go you know visit that other country but Venus in cancer tends to be a bit of a homebody it kind of doesn't it might have a bit of a fear of heights 
or like a fear of being placed in like a somewhere that they're not familiar with, um, you know, and you could see that uh, you just want to stay home. So, you know, if you have a big property or a big house, maybe rent out some rooms. And it's like from your home or from your dining room, you can come in contact with other people. And, and in, in that way, you get something really, you know, really powerful and really, really strong to understand other people's more foreign ideals in your own home. It's almost like a, what do I want to call it? It's like a key or like a crux to like overcome a karmic, a karmic pattern that deals for Venus and Cancer. It deals with um, you know feeling stuck or feeling like you can't leave somewhere because there there can be a tendency towards a rec reclusivity, being a recluse or staying home all the time because it does also indicate like home employment or self employment or you know running a business from your home. So you know why would I ever leave this incredible home, um, and then. Uh, you know, if it's difficultly aspected by Pluto or Uranus, any of the outer planets, actually, it can create a bit of like agoraphobia as well. So like, you know, maybe you don't love crowds, maybe there's a touch of social anxiety. And that's why you have to be creative in overcoming that and maybe um, inviting people back to your house or finding loopholes. There's a need for like a healthy cognitive dissonance with this Venus sign because it can get a bit sheltered as well. It can get a bit disconnected from how things work outside of their home or, um, you know, it might, it's not, I wouldn't call it gullible per se, but it can be a little bit like, um, not even unsympathetic or unempathetic. It gets, you know, that there's poverty in the world or that there's, you know, great wealth and that things are different, but it maybe doesn't really feel a need to apply itself to those things. So it can, and that can create a weird karmic pattern for them where, um, you know, maybe the property taxes become really high or maybe, things feel threatened, even if there's a lot of security. Um, so they have to really see and connect with people who have a different uh, type of life than them just to remember the complexity of life because they, they want to simplify. You know, this is a placement that like really simplifies and really wants to make life, um, you know, stable and profitable and prosperous. And in a way, it can become philanthropic, you know, especially later in life, you know, they might fly to impoverished countries and help, you know, um, bring clean water or or do something really incredible like that, especially later in life. But again, early in life, even up to about the age of like 40 or 45 years old, there's a strong, strong want to be in the home and to be predictable and stable to some degree. And as long as that's there, they might get a bit more adventurous, but um, they can also find a bit of like panic or fear in, again, foreign or unfamiliar places. And it's not like something that, that would debilitate them or that is that horrible. It's just not super comfortable. So I recommend that this Venus sign builds their home and, and you know, invites people to their home, uh, safe, assured people. And, you know, there is a connection with the status quo. Like, for example, with this Venus sign, you never want to not have home insurance. You never want to not have health insurance. Um, there can sort of be, especially if you get like a weird Uranus transit or even a Neptune transit, like sudden, like, like a, for example, part of the house burning down or um, some weird health thing that comes up very immediately. Um, it's a good, good placement for insurance. Even like selling insurance. Again, real estate, insurance taxes, accounting, all of these things are very indicated for this Venus sign. This Venus sign operates more through the money side of Venus, truly, than it does through the relationship side. And of course, there are still relationship dynamics, but the family will oftentimes, um, or the mother, the mother, the mother's side of the family, or the less disciplinary parents side of the family will occupy a lot of the space where a relationship might come in, and might also be very particular. I mean, I even see like arranged marriages with this placement, um, marriages that aren't based on love, marriages of convenience, um, very indicated with this. Um, and if you are a Venus in Cancer who is lucky enough to pursue your own heart, to have like independence, and you know, not be controlled by the family, um, you know, that older, more traditional sense of family unit, uh, then you can really enjoy 
hopefully having a relationship that isn't just like another parent relationship because it can you know maybe you attract in people who need you to be their mother or their father and that's all that that ever is that's a possibility um you, you just you can't get your mind too wrapped up in it because relationships will also come and go with this um placement again it's like the moon you know the moon it changes it's always move it's the fastest moving body that we track in astrology um so relationships can leave just as quickly as they come in um you don't want to seek the definition of your emotional stability in relationships but again feels like real estate insurance wealth all of these things can just flood you when you are ready to like build that traditional sense of home and and of course then you can have like that incredible you know traditional marriage as well that's totally possible but um you want to make sure that you're not the slave to that marriage or you're not the um the, you know titled basically because Venus and Cancer, again, it's so traditional. It's like, okay, you are the wife. That means that you stay at home with the kids, and that means that you do all of this, and that means that you are this traditional imprint of that. And that's not bad for everybody. Like, sometimes for some people that works really perfectly, but um, or even with the husband, it's like, okay, you're the husband. You're going to go out and work and make a lot of money, and that will be that, you know? Um, watch out for it, you know? In this age of Aquarius paradigm, we've all seen how much that type of thing has gotten damaged and then also been a difficult thing for many families to continue on. Like the family unit or the idea of the family unit is really broken right now collectively. And you, Venus and Cancer, are one of the few energies that still have the ability to be there or to do that and to even show us the good side of that or the important side of that uh, regardless of whether or not you're involved in it so anyway great venus sign lots of comfortable experiences lots of fun childlike experiences as well and even a great opportunity for parenthood too so like your kids would have a good relationship with you as venus and cancer most likely um you know uh, having kids would be considered enjoyable or like the best years of your life to like have kids so that's always another uh, possibility for them too very fertile energy very likely to have like a lot of kids for example so like the women might have like you know five or six kids um the men uh it's especially if like the men had like like a venus and cancer in the fifth house they might have you know kids with like uh, many different women that that's possible too um or even adoption you can see adoption with venus and cancer as well like adopting kids or fostering i've seen a lot of venus and cancer people who are foster parents um so that's an interesting thing as well so parenthood is always usually indicated in some way also, these are the people who parent their parents or the people who are caretakers for their parents or for, you know, um, animals or pets of like uh, animal abuse, like, you know, maybe having taking in all of the, um, you know, abused animals that that's possible with this, too. So you're a very parental energy and that just has to be a nice blessing, I hope. OK, Venus and Leo. Oh, wow. Venus and Leo is such a different uh, energy than Venus and Cancer. I always love whenever I'm doing a video like this and I go from like Cancer to Leo and then Leo to Virgo. It's all there's so much difference in this part of the Zodiac um, where the energy just really shifts up and makes a big change. Um, so Venus and Leo, this is um, indicative of fame or renown or reputation, prestige. Um, Venus and Leo is not very much a homebody. Um, so you would maybe beware from being self-employed or, um, or working from the home that could become frustrating and maybe create like a, an addictive type of tendency, um, because you need to be seen as Venus in Leo, especially if it's above the horizon. So in houses six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, or 12 in astrology, uh, you would, if your Venus in Leo is in one of those houses, um, you need to be in a very public type of sector to feel that your Venus energy is being seen. And it doesn't mean that you can't be self-employed or you can't work from home, but if you were, you would then need to have a very active social life to offset it, you know? You would need to be, like, out every weekend or doing public speeches or working maybe with a nonprofit, or or, or doing something, like, public or maybe being a singer-songwriter or a performer or something on the side. Um, you know, Venus and Leo is is an incredible placement and it does attract themes of servitude which means that there m might be issues that come up with like uh an expectation for people to serve 
you or for you to serve others or for you to be, um, you know, again, in hierarchy. So Leo and Capricorn, but specifically Leo is a hierarchical sign. Um, so putting Venus in this energy indicates that the themes of hierarchy are, wow, we really like that. We really like being above people or beneath other people. And um, we have to watch out for this as Venus and Leo, because we can get too soft with themes of hierarchy. Like, like yes, I, I went out to eat and I, I, you know, talked down to the servant who served me and they were reminded that they were a servant. I'm not saying that all Venus and Leos are that way, but watch out for that because that can really come back to um, haunt you in the future. You, ha you have like this expectation, or let me rephrase this, other people have this expectation of you, of like this sort of benevolent, charitable you know, kind, warm-hearted person. So watch out for sort of being the tyrannical ruler archetype with Venus and Leo, because that's also a possibility. Um, this is a very, like, beautiful Venus sign, so these people are super attractive, right? You know, they, they can be the models, for example, like a career in modeling, or a career in acting, a career in some kind of performance art, even um, being, like, a teacher or a professor. This is more so, like, Venus and Sagittarius, but Venus and Leo can also, you know, get away with this. Um, and th that's kind of what it ends up being for them. It's almost like getting away with being the professor. I don't mean that in any way to you guys, but um, yeah, so Venus and Leo, it can get away with anything almost. Um, don't let that go to your ego, Venus and Leo, because, you know, ego is another uh, theme here. Um, but Venus and Leo, you know, it can, you know, maybe just take bubble gum like right off the rack and, you know, just walk out and then that's that. And um, you watch out for accidentally doing illegal things as a Venus and Leo. Again, this video is for <laughs> entertainment purposes only. I'm, I, I can't advise in these fields, but um, there can be, like, sometimes it can be impulsive, and you might accidentally walk out of the restaurant without paying, or accidentally walk out of the bar without paying, and this type of thing at a certain time might, um, you know, you, you could face a big consequence, and, and it's, sometimes it's like you have bigger things on your mind, you know, so you, you've got to maybe make things smaller as a Venus and Leo. Um, and sometimes remember, okay, this is what I'm doing in this moment, and, and um, it, so basically it can be prone to a bit of ADD or ADHD as well, um, and it, it depends on the other placements, you know, for example, like a Virgo with Venus and Leo, much less prone to being like ADD or ADHD, but like a Leo with Venus and Leo, you know, this is like on autopilot all the time and like a million different things going through the mind at once. Um, you know, you need to give back to yourself, though, as a Venus and Leo. Never is it bad as a Venus and Leo to, like, get your nails done, to go to the spa, to get the massage, to have your hair done, to, to be served by people appropriately, right? You know, it, there's typically, with Venus and Leo, there's a lot of money invested into the appearance, okay? Lots of money, like you rake, burning money on the appearance, you know, money, also needing a lot of money is Venus and Leo, money burning, like um, thousands and thousands of dollars just, you know, disappearing from the account on, on things that we might not even remember what they were. Um, so another uh, prospect for this Venus sign is... Um, like fraudulence from other people, like people overcharging you for things. Watch out for this as Venus and Leo, because you give off a very royal or noble uh, vibe. So you go into the salon and you get charged double and you never even know that you were charged double um, just because you looked so wealthy and they thought that you would never notice and never care and most likely you didn't. Um, so that can happen a lot, you know, at the restaurant, at the salon, at the um, taxing office, you can be charged a lot more. <laughs> you know, the accountant might see your, like, if you have an accountant, they see like your, your grosses and your nets and they're like, uh, there's so much there. Let's let's not. I don't even need to think much about this. Let's just take as much to be safe. <laughs> you know, Let, let's let's do the forty percent tax just to be safe. You know, we definitely won't get in trouble, and they they won't do the math. There's a lot of that with Venus and Leo, where money just burns away. Um, again, Venus is, and all the Venus and fire signs deal with this to some degree. Venus and Aries, Venus and Leo, Venus and Sag. There's a degree of like money kind of being like burnt away all the time. <laughs> Even relationships too, like burning through relationships, burning through money, burning through homes, burning through vehicles, burning through cell phones, burning through computers. Like it's like consumerist, okay? There's a con there, c consumer nature. We got Venus, the theme of nature, fire 
consumer, consumer nature, consumer culture, normalcy bias. How many pairs of shoes do I need? How many, what year is my car? How nice is the, my, my phone? Um, you know, how many hair colors do I need? You know, um, how many designer wallets do I need? You know, you burn two thousand dollars on on a wallet that's that's worth uh, twenty five dollars. This type of thing is common with Venus and Leo. So try to detach it a little bit from like the designer brands, or um, also an attitude about it. For example, you might say to someone that you're talking to, like, "Oh, I don't do designer brands. I'm very humble. I'm very down to earth." Like, meanwhile, you're wearing like a designer um, belt or something. And they see the designer belt, and and you're sitting there, and you're talking about, yeah, you know, I'm humble. I don't believe in in paying for designer goods, and they're like looking at the designer good that you're wearing the whole time, and it's like you've not realized that you're wearing it. <laughs> this type of thing can happen to Venus and Leo a lot. It can be seen as like yuppie, okay, and like also to lie sometimes too, because sometimes it's not that you guys lie. You're this is not like you know a pathological liar or something but sometimes you can get caught up in a moment or caught up in an emotion like you read people so well as Venus and Leah that you might you might realize that you're with somebody who's like maybe very frugal and very humble so you chameleon and you catch on to that and you're like yeah I want to be frugal and humble and maybe you think and you know yeah I did spend less at the salon the other day I'm frugal and humble and then you start bringing up that conversation and, and, and they're talking about how they don't buy designer and you're like, yeah, I don't buy, I, I, I wouldn't, won't buy designer in the future, you know, and then you're wearing the, the designer belt and then, then that rumor starts and then this is the qualms of Venus and Leo. And of course, it doesn't mean that for all Venus and Leos that this type of thing comes up. You know, you could be like a sun, uh, you know, again, Virgo sun, um, Capricorn moon or something would really offset this and make you quite a bit more frugal and not have these types of experiences in this way. Um, you know, Cancer with Venus in, in, in Leo might be uh, much more frugal as well. But there's a degree of this, and these are all hypotheticals. There's a degree of this like issue with Venus and Leo, where you might say, you know, I'm I'm the prince, I'm the princess, I'm the I'm the I'm above you, and you are. You probably are quite above people with Venus and Leo. Like maybe you have a lot more, and you've spent a lot more, and you know you have the connections, and there's like a, something very diplomatic to, or or something that wants at least to be quite diplomatic. Um, and people see that and people get jealous of it. So people try to undermine it. So I always recommend to Venus and Leo, you know, take it down a notch, you know, um, like there's no reason to make issues with people from needing to be seen as like the brightest shining star. Cause it's like, you're, you're kind of like a shooting star with Venus and Leo. And the key is like shooting stars, they appear and then they disappear. And Venus and Leo needs to remember that it's like, maybe it's better to shine for a while than to shine brightly for a moment, okay? So when Venus and Leo maybe can access their Saturn and find a way to make more permanence in how they shine, that's when this Venus sign really becomes, you know, the the Grammy Award winner or the, um, you know, the philanthropist that really made a difference somewhere, okay? And you want to be effective as a Venus and Leo. This is important, guys, okay? And I'm getting major chills. You want to be effective as a Venus and Leo. You don't just want to look the part, you want to be effective. And once you can be effective as a Venus and Leo, that's when you get all of these, like, um, caveats and all of these awards or all of these true merits, true nobility, true you know, you know, true connections. Okay. And, and it's not, it's not anymore something that's like disputed by people. Okay. But great, great Venus sign, you know, fun experiences, you know, you could be with anybody, you know, you might get asked out on dates all the time. Or, you know, you, if you have something else in your chart that makes you a bit more shy, um, I doubt it <laughs> with Venus and Leo, but um, it could still happen. Um, you might still be able to pick whoever you like. Okay, so you're you're at everything with Venus and Leo is kind of like shopping around, you know, do I want to buy it? Why not? I'll buy it or I won't buy it. You can really like, like, like sky's the limit for you guys. You just got to, you know, do something of substance though too and something that's effective and then you mix that together and, and life is awesome. Okay. All right, let's talk about Venus in Virgo now. Okay, yeah, again, very different than Venus in Leo. Whoa, <laughs> I, I, again, as I was saying in Venus and Leo's interpretation, it's like when you go from Cancer to Leo to Virgo, you get this like three, 
three um, progression of signs that are like very different and energies that are very different from one another. So Venus and Virgo, this is one of the traditional debilitations of Venus, meaning that the Venus energy does not naturally find ease or simplicity here, and that the way that it expresses is complex and, um, and uh, difficult, especially early on in life. So why Venus is debilitated in Virgo is obviously Virgo is the archetype of the Virgin, and Venus is the archetype of the um, sort of, you know, it is sexual expression, it's, it's, uh, it's constant sexuality, it is the openness of sexuality. So inherently, the energy of Virgin archetype does not and they, they don't understand each other, they don't respect each other. Virgo energy, again, it's a more chaste archetype, so it might find moral superiority to the energy of Venus, whereas Venus finds Virgo to be quite um, hypocritical and prudish, so there's like just a kind of a constant conflict with this energy. Um, I, I think of... The FX show uh, Feud, Betty and Joan, when I think of the placement of Venus in Virgo, it's like this inherent conflict between like two different personality types that are like so incompatible that it just creates almost like a humor about it. So there's like a humor and also like a like like where optimism and pessimism are so strong and so concentrated and so there that it's just like an explosion of chaos, basically. I'm being a bit humorous here, but yeah, Venus in Virgo, not, not, not an easy Venus sign to have. And there's a reason for that, you know, karma is a thing, incarnation is a thing, and there are still great, great experiences to be had as a Venus in Virgo. And it becomes so much easier once you accept that there's something very funny about this. There's something very entertaining, very cinematic and very funny. Um, about the energy that you're going through in your life. So um, early on can be difficult for Venus and Virgo, and I'll just, I'll get, we'll talk about the difficult things of Venus and Virgo, then we'll talk about the great things. So let's get the difficult out of the way. Oftentimes, the theme of sexuality early on in in the experience is like something that is traumatic in some way. So there's a trauma element to not even just sexuality, but um, specifically like relating to other people, right? Um, this can be in the home, but it's really especially with like platonic relationships or people who aren't even direct family, because Virgo is not a direct family energy. Again, it's kind of separate from that. So this energy in and of itself uh, can indicate that um, people might have really tried to control you um, you know, in early adulthood, for example, like people might have really used you in some way. This is an energy that can be uh, prone to being used in some way, you know, as a salesperson, as a, you know, in a career being forced to do something that is like, you know, maybe selling a product through your sexual appeal, for example. Like, so like maybe you're hired because you're like beautiful and they're, they're telling you, okay, you're going to, you're going to wear that lower cut thing while you're selling this. Okay. And, and it's like people, like the authority can be demeaning. So there's a demeaning relationship with authority with Venus in Virgo. Also with Venus and Scorpio, they both of the debilitated Venus signs share this in common, um, a, a demeaning experience with authority. Um, so yeah, and that can go in so many different directions, of course, so we don't have to go into those particulars here, because um, we, we can all, um, you know, think of what that could entail. So that is a possibility with this Venus sign, especially uh, before the first Saturn return in life. But after, especially, I mean, the Saturn return can be the best thing in the world for this Venus sign, because it gives some amount of authority to the Venus and Virgo person. And that is going to be a major testing time. So for example, the Venus and Virgo person gains, like, perhaps there's a favorable marriage, and they get status through a marriage, perhaps they ascend up really high in a corporate hierarchy, um, perhaps they even go into political or public service, and they get some kind of like entitlement or some kind of status around the time of the first Saturn return, around the time of like 28 to 30 years old. Before that time, it's, I'm not going to lie, this, I mean, unless there, there could be, you know, a great, like, uh, Jupiter and Taurus or something that trines this and pulls this into something that's much, much easier and much, uh, you know, more fun, lucky and benevolent, but typically the first 28 years can be traced back to the theme of demeaning in some way, or struggle with authority or struggle with, um, with the, with concepts of youth okay 
So, um, again, around the time of the Saturn return, suddenly authority is given to Venus and Virgo, and this three to four year period of time between the ages of 28 to 32 is um, the testing time of the life, where how will, how will the Venus and Virgo now use the authority that perhaps the people who demeaned them before had? Will Venus and Virgo now use that authority in an above board, kind and benevolent way? Or will they use that authority to then demean others in a different way in a vengeful nature? And depending on the choice that is made, we see the momentum set for Venus and Virgo throughout the um, other stages of their life. This Venus sign can have great status, and as well as having great status taken away, um, issues around status are a big thing for it. Um, again, hierarchical themes, uh, being like uh, given some amount of power or some amount of rule. Um, so, so that's always going to be a thing for Venus and Virgo. You know, what status do I have? What class am I? Those things will come up. Um, but as it, w thinking of just relationships or just love with Venus and Virgo, um, there's a really good like camaraderie with this sign, actually. Like you can really have beautiful connections with people um, because, again, it's almost childlike. Uh, Virgo is a very youthful energy, um, but it's like wise youth basically because we've gotten halfway through the zodiac we're at the six energy with venus with virgo um so it is still youthful it is still exuberant but there's a wisdom within it at the same time so this actually in the energy of venus gives a great ability to appeal to others to be popular to be um you know uh also a source of hope or inspiration for other people. For example, I don't have Venus in Virgo personally, but it was a Venus in Virgo who completely changed my mindset. I used to be a very pessimistic person to some degree, and a Venus in Virgo really helped me to find more optimism and to really find to find more you know, positivity in a time that was very dark. So this this Venus sign can be a light for other people through their own struggles in their own toils. So it's a great placement for a therapist, you know, fields like therapy, fields like um, addiction counseling or um, trauma counseling. Um, to a degree, it wouldn't last forever or something about that would become a little bit too old or too, um, too, too troublesome. Uh, because again, Venus and Virgo is more oriented to existing in like a, just a status element and being there and not really working at it. Um, but yeah, there's a great opportunity, even if they don't have like the title of therapist or the title of, you know, counselor, they will counsel and they will advise and they will help other people to overcome trauma if they're operating in the good energy line that they have the potential to at around the age of 28 to 32. Now, if Venus and Virgo turns into a power tripper, a power monger, fear monger, which is possibility at age 28 to 32, um, that will keep going. You know, the power will always be an element, but it will also, um, like, like there'll be an element of having to continue the, uh, themes of, of disorientation or, or self demeaning relationships that, that, that will continue on. I know that's a weird articulation, but that that's as best as I can formulate around it. Um, and basically, you know, Venus and Virgo, a lot of the lifetime deals with just uh, learning through lack and through what we don't have. And that doesn't mean, you know, being poor or never having relation relationships. But, um, you know, you have to remember that when you have a lot of money or when you have the great relationship, you are then lacking the opposite. You know, you're lacking poverty. You're lacking um, a poor relationship. And that has to be thought about too. Like, what does it mean for me now to lack these things that used to be bad? Are there counter... Uh, counterparts to that, you know? It's a very philosophic energy in a way, okay? But Venus and Virgo, you know, good. You know, it's debilitated, but there will hopefully be other things in the chart that uh, compensate for that, as there, I mean, there always are. So let's now talk about Venus in Libra. So Venus in Libra, this is another home sign of Venus, meaning that it's one of uh, Venus's favorite signs to occupy, and the energy is natural, harmonious, and well indicated. Um, and that is because uh, Libra sort of has that Athena energy. It's like the sort of, um, it is technically a masculine sign, but it brings forth a balance of like masculine and feminine energy, and it brings forth um, at least thought around the concept of merging and creating that type of balance, which Venus finds very favorable. Um, so Venus in Libra is a great person for, who is very strategic, very attractive, very uh, maybe even presidential or um, 
political in some way, and uh, I don't necessarily even mean politics as in like public service or or government, but there's uh, an ability to navigate like life's politics basically with Venus and Libra. Um, it gives a good luck when it comes to reputation and prestige and um, you know power dynamics and socially charismatically interacting with people in these sectors of life. So Venus and Libra will have a natural ability to like be liked by powerful people, basically. Um, so diplomacy, social contacts, all of these things are very indicated for Venus and Libra. Um, also like joint finances, uh, prosperous marriages, marriages of convenience, marriages of like uh, it, like where an empire is built or where a business or a person benefits from marriage. Um, all of this is possible. Even arranged marriages for Venus and Libra. Maybe it's like a traditional family thing. I, I see that sometimes. Um, and Venus and Libra is also extremely uh, stylish as well. So there's a love of uh, clothing or material or colors um, and a great ability to combine them. And this, it's like their appearance and their image is half the game or half the battle. And then they have a great speaking ability or a great eloquence or elegance in their manners or their mannerisms, which is very um, appealing to people. So yes, this uh, sign deals a lot with popularity, and um, they might have a huge friend group, or um, you know, constantly it might be hard to go out into public without people recognizing you or wanting to strike a, strike up a conversation with Venus and Libra. Um, the color purple is very great, so like a royal purple or um, any type, any shades of like purple, lavenders, pinks, grays, um, smoky types of, of like purple shades are indicated. This is a power color for uh, Venus in Libra. Um, also like cardinal red um, or any color that just is like, you know, when you see somebody who's dressed in like just a, a color that is different or so strong or so powerful and it just sets them apart it's like it, it's in this subtlety that venus and libra really shines so let's talk a little bit about relationships for venus and libra um typically they are very valued in their relationships of course there are other elements in the chart that can um, make this different, but uh, they will oftentimes have to be the one to break up in a relationship. Most of the time, their partners will not break up with them, even if things are pretty bad off, won't divorce, won't break up. So that typically falls on the shoulders of the Venus and Libra person, um, because basically everybody who's with you knows that you're a treasure to some degree. Um, again, it's almost like these people are rare, like you don't see that many people with Venus and Libra. Um, maybe it's because they're taken already. Yep. So the only red flag or issue with this sign is that there can be an ob objectification, because again, Libra is the only inanimate uh, object in the zodiac, it is the scales. So your love language or your love life can become objectified. Um, so for this, we can sometimes see like... Um, you know, selling of the body or something in this type of industry um, with Venus in Libra because there's an objectification around the theme of Venusian principles. Um, although it is some maybe rare for this placement as well because it also shows that uh, things dealing with love or dealing with sexuality or dealing with the body are also lucky and coherent as well. So it could go either way and it will depend, you know, for example, like a Venus-Pluto contact, despite it being Venus and Libra, could, um, you know, show a more negative light to this type of thing. Um, also, though, it can sometimes lend itself to being in a marriage where the spouse considers the Venus and Libra person their property or um, maybe really wraps them up in, you know, material goods or uses that to guilt them like, okay, I, we have this much money, I have this much money, you're the Venus and Libra person, um, you can't leave because I have this or I've given this to you or I've given you this house or I've given you this well-being, now you owe me. There can be like a debt, an emotional debt or a social debt. Um, more so even than like a financial debt, where what does Venus and Libra owe and who does Venus and Libra owe? Um, that's really the only difficult area for Venus and Libra. Once they can not succumb to those like debt cycles, like is so great. You know, they're, they've pretty much done um, everything to overcome relationship karma. So they can have great relationships and they can find true love pretty easily as well, as long as they're not 
you know, gold digging or just choosing a relationship based on, you know, what pretty clothes can I wear? Um, the, and again, like they might think like up, upon hearing that, like, you know, I'm definitely not doing that. But upon looking deeper, um, you know, there can be wounds of like not having had nice clothes as a child or not having had nice things. And it's like, I need that now. Um, so it's neither here nor there, but um, they have to watch out for needing things that they don't realize that they're just needing, okay? Um, so watch out for weird undertone needs as a Venus and Libra person. But I'm not kidding when I say that this is an awesome Venus sign because it's like the in-between time um, offsetting these, uh, you know, big events of life, you know, the marriage or the divorce or the breakup or the start of a relationship. The in-between time on all of that is like awesome and filled with a lot of fun and filled with a lot of beauty, a lot of uh, prosperity typically, and a lot of like um, humor as well. Like there's a lot to be given to Venus and Libra and they just get it and that's just that. And it, it doesn't mean that their life is perfect or that, you know, there aren't, you know, an equal share of pain that Venus and Libra has to go through but like they have fun and they do well like they 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 get it going you know <laughs> um but anyway so let's talk about venus in scorpio now so this is the last of venus's debilitated signs yes venus is debilitated in scorpio and um it is a very um you know strong sharp energy to be uh, occupied by Venus. Um, there's an openness about Venus's energy naturally, and then of course Scorpio is a more closed off, um, you know, hidden sign sometimes, so that creates a bit of chaos with this placement. Um, so the first thing that tends to come up with Venus and Scorpio individuals is a relationship atmosphere that can be a bit warlike. So Venus in Scorpio tends to find itself in relationships where there might be a lot of arguments or there might be a lot of um, even like threatening or domineering people who are also, you know, not how they seem or like what you see is not what you get. Basically, relationships become very mysterious and very Plutonian. Um, so there are maybe a lot of power in relationships, a lot of power dynamics, a lot of control dynamics. And um, this Venus placement really does focus relationships as well. Like it's because again, Scorpio energy is focusing, it's fixed. It, um, it doesn't avert its gaze once it's looking at something. Um, so again, people with Venus and Scorpio, sometimes the relationship or perhaps in some cases the job or the uh, financial environment, these things overwhelm the rest of the experience or um, sort of consume the rest of the experience. So for example, it might be difficult for a Venus and Scorpio person to be single, or it might be difficult for them to, um, I wouldn't say it's difficult, but it's not likely for them to stay single long or for them to stay out of relationships because this Venusian theme um, gets focused and it gets like um, overwhelming to all the other sectors of life. So everything else might revolve around relationships like health, financial well-being, um, pursuits, projects, all of these things might orbit around the relationship. So sometimes there can be like overstaying in relationships or, um, and, and there's really good loyalty with Venus and Scorpio. That is one thing. They're not like apt for cheating or apt for um, you know, taking advantage of or betraying who they're with in the most part. Um, but they will sometimes attract people who are that way, or, um, you know, maybe there's a big trauma relating to having been cheated on, or the prospect of being single might become something that is um, worrisome. Um, because again, the struggle with Venus in Scorpio is that it can actually be hard to um, be completely independent. There can be like dependencies with that Venus because um, again, it's not a great multitasking energy you know, relating to like work or career or finance, they would want to be in a career that um, they can really focus on. So yeah, like a private investigator, anything investigative, anything dealing with healing um, through psychology or astrology or something where they can really, you know, get beneath the surface and pinprint or, or pinpoint, I'm sorry, pinpoint really specific things that have gone unseen. Like that's where that Venus sign does well. But in like a career where they maybe have to be really quick or really responsive or, you know, um, having to be adaptable all the time, um, it's not the greatest um, ability naturally. And of course, you know, maybe if they're, um, you know, a Libra with a Scorpio Venus, um, that could be different. Or even a Sagittarius with Scorpio 
Um, so learning new habits of adaptability is a really important way to uh, work with this Venus placement um, because they can also really find themselves in like very powerful uh, relationships or they could like build an empire um, or really like support. So Venus and Scorpio is really good in like a supporting role um, or in an advisory type of role as well because again they can focus on the problems you know and they might even be seen as a little bit pessimistic as well uh, so they might really bring to life problems and present them in an opportunistic way you know in a, in a Venusian way and that can either be like their best talent or something that makes them reviled by other people because um, again depending on other aspects of the chart but typically optimism is not necessarily the trait they are known for um, they're either pragmatic or frankly quite pessimistic um, so again the the Venus the, the natural light you know life loving energy of Venus is averted with the Scorpio placement of Venus and kind of blocked off a little bit so there can even be a bit sometimes of like meanness with the placement of Venus in Scorpio or um, you know, just pointed, sharp, like kind of like tactile energy. So, um, and, and again, other placements can offset that, you know, if they've got like a well-placed moon, for example, that can really offset that, um, or a well-placed Jupiter that may be, um, you know, like a Jupiter in Sagittarius, for example, or an, or an exalted Jupiter could really um, help that Venus in Scorpio to be uh, more kind and more helpful because it can be a very helpful energy so for example like a lawyer with Venus in Scorpio might be able to completely accomplish their clients desires again a therapist or a psycho an an a psychoanalyst with uh, Venus in Scorpio might really be able to heal people a doctor or a surgeon with Venus in Scorpio might really um, save a lot of people's lives but the personal experiences and the relationships and oftentimes the relationship with money is something that is a struggle at some point in time at least and i'm and when i say struggle i'm not saying like oh i mean everybody struggles at some point in time with those but i'm talking like a struggle okay um big time this venus sign also has to watch out for um indulgences as well because the scorpio energy is like a very addictive energy basically venus and scorpio it's uh, addictive tendencies addictive personalities and that will kind of be a lifelong emphasis for them and that doesn't mean that they're like addicted even to what might be known by anybody else it's more of like um the way that they move through their space the way that they are in the home the way that they are um socially is maybe a bit addictive or a bit um, sometimes vampiristic as well so it's really important for Venus and Scorpio to lighten up sometimes and to um, find something that they enjoy you know they need something to focus on idle hands really are the devil's handiwork with this placement and once they can find something that they're really passionate about and that is positive they can channel a lot of that uh, pent-up energy into results or into things that are helpful for others or just into something that's like a really good accomplishment. Um, so yeah, they need that project. They need um, something to really put a lot of energy into. Again, Scorpio is like magnified energy. So with Venus, it's like... Um, just having maybe too much energy for their own good in a way sometimes and that can create a bit of an implosion and a bit of a like drained and fatigued feeling just by having like too much energy just given to them just like available for all the time so yeah insomnia is indicated um uh, panic disorders or th things like that can come up especially if there's a neptune contact um but or, or a uranus contact but it, again it's not like set in stone i would definitely recommend that they avoid like um stimulants or anything that's like uh, giving them too much energy because they already have so much energy um, but then also like like depressants you don't want that either like anything that basically alters the mood or alters the energy that you have that can be a big problem with this placement um, so you really want your natural chemistry to be your best ally with Venus and Scorpio the key really is like naturalism and um, making sure that you're feeling how you feel in your environment you know if there's a need for like substances or a need even for like um, you know just uh, interactions with people that sort of distract you from how you really feel um, you know those feelings of stress or those feelings of pain or those feelings of problems are like a defense mechanism and there's something that are needed and it's sort of like you know for example if we get a cut like that hurts because we need to bring attention to the cut we need to treat the cut um, if it didn't hurt it might get like infected and like rot or something so here's again the main struggle for Venus and Scorpio is that it sometimes ingests things or creates things that distract from the pain of a cut so the rot kind of sets in 
Um, so yeah, don't repress or distract yourself from your pain or from your problems as a Venus in Scorpio because that magnifies it, okay? Um, again, debt. Watch out for debt. A, a Venus in Scorpio who is not utilizing debt or not utilizing credit irresponsibly will have, like, many advantages because it can make, like, um, sometimes a like a bad relationship with money as well. And, and it's a similar to what I'm just talking about, like shopaholic spending habits, things like that. Um, so if you're a Venus in Scorpio, try to exercise frugality to some degree and um, spend what you have. Don't spend what you don't have. Don't spend from your future, all right? And that is really a great area to help. And focus on your Jupiter, okay? If, if a Venus is debilitated, the Jupiter is the area of, you know, focus, so Venus and Jupiter go hand in hand. This also applies for Venus and Virgo and Venus and Aries to a degree. Um, you want to look to your Jupiter and see, okay, what is that telling me that I need to do? Because you will experience the Venus energy more healthily through that uh, planet too. Okay, Venus in Sagittarius. This is, um, you know, it's a great placement for Venus, really. Again, it's a natural connection to the planet Jupiter, and whenever Venus and Jupiter are intertwined in any way, um, it is a symbol of luck, benevolence, prosperity, and enjoyment of life. Um, so this is Venus in Jupiter's sign of Sagittarius, and it is probably, um, you know, uh, Venus in Leo is a similar energy to Venus in Sagittarius, except Venus in Sag brings it more into the like brain okay so if venus and leo was sort of our body and like our glamorous um sort of maybe experience of fame or renown or prestige um venus and sag takes that up into the mind space um and it doesn't mean like, like it can still achieve an amount of prestige as well for sure but it has more to do with venus and sag's ideas than necessarily with the body or the um or the physical um, so there's a lot of emphasis on the like ideas and the philosophies and the and the way that life is seen by a Venus and Sag person. They have a lot of power over um, their thoughts. Okay, their thoughts can be manifested very easily. Um, you know, their voice has a lot of power. Their voice has quite a lot of influence. Um, so yeah, this is a good placement for like politics or anything like singing, performing, acting like Venus and Leo, but it has more to do with the performance than like the appearance. Like again, Venus and Leo is more about the appearance. Venus and Sag is more about like what's coming from like within and, and the, the, um, what is said, what is uh, idealized as well. Um, it can be a bit of a trend setting energy as well. So with relationships, Venus and Sag can indicate like many different relationships um, or lots of crushes or lots of flirtation. Again, the energy of Sagittarius is like more, more, more expansion. So um, there can be promiscuity with this placement, kind of similar to Venus and Scorpio and Libra. There's a similarity between Venus Libra, Venus Scorpio, and Venus Sag, where it can indicate a lot of um, of partners. Um, but it, again, that's not definitely set in stone. Like if Saturn, again, connects to your Venus in Sag, um, for example, you might be uh, quite um, abstinent as well. It just depends on what else is connecting to Venus, as I said in the preface to Venus. Um, but yeah, this is like kind of a cheerleader energy as well. Um, in fact, I would say the archetype for Venus and Sagittarius is like the cheerleader. It's like the archetype of the cheerleader. Um, so somebody who uses their voice or uses their skill set to um, be optimistic and to give motivation. It's like a kind of a motivational energy. They deal in motivation. They deal in energy they love smiling they love laughing it's a great energy for a comedian as well um or somebody who is um even like a coach or athletic this this venus sign needs athletics definitely it needs especially if like mars is in a fire sign as well or if mars um is in any kind of like direct aspect to venus um this this venus sign will want to channel a lot of its um, sexual energy into even like competition or athletics in some way running is really good again thinking of like a horse or a centaur there's a lot of running there's a lot of trotting a lot of jogging and a lot of movement this is not a venus sign where you want to be cramped up in a cubicle all day or where you even want things to be like in the crown or third eye chakra all the time like thinking okay what's my strategy what's my plan like this sign can do that in abundance but it 
it's so brilliant with these ideas because it's not what it has to do for like eight hours a day, for example. Um, so you want to offset the needs of your mind with physical activity. They will work in tandem with this placement. Also, this Venus sign needs to travel as well, so it's not so suited for like a homebody or somebody who is, um, you know, staying in the same place, working on the same routine all the time. Um, and again, this is kind of one of those placements, like again, it's very elevated type of placement, especially again if it's above the horizon. Um, and it's really lucky, again, it's like the lottery energy, um, being lucky and benevolent and prosperous in most pursuits. Therefore, this placement, when it doesn't get what it wants, can be very out of control and very like... Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what the best symbol for it is. It's almost like you take like candy from a baby and it's like the baby has like, um, you know, been horribly injured or something. This sign can be like that sometimes. And all the Venus fire signs to a degree, Venus in Leo and Venus in Aries can be like dramatic or theatrical. And that's not like purposeful. Like they truly feel like by maybe not meeting a goal or not achieving what they set out for or not getting the love of that one person, it can be something that like really like injures them. And that's the key for Venus and Sag because if it wants to accomplish these higher minded goals, you know, like ninth house energy goals, it has to be able to become immune to these like small setbacks or these small things because it can sort of be like, okay, I didn't meet the financial goal or I didn't like, um, get the contract or I didn't, I didn't, um, you know, get the marriage proposal. So I'm quitting, you know, it can sort of be, it can kind of shift around. It's like, okay, I didn't, you know, make a million dollars in that career. So I'm quitting that, you know, or, okay, I didn't, um, you know, chart number one with that book that I wrote, I'm not writing books anymore, you know, that type of thing. And that's where Venus in Sagittarius has a tender point and a soft spot because it can maybe deny itself quite a bit of success by like giving up or by um, not quite or by setting too lofty of goals. This is another big area for Venus in Sagittarius. On one hand, it needs to do that. It needs inspirational, motivational goals. That's part of the energy line. But then it has to maybe have a good like plan B in place or a good like divestment is what I'm going to say, divestment of hope in a way. So it's like, okay, I'm going to write this book or okay, I'm going to pursue this office or I'm going to pursue this position. But if I don't reach it, I've got to know what I'm doing next. And I've got to know, you know, maybe I'll keep doing it or maybe I'll keep trying. You kind of want to set up your entire plan at the forefront. You know, how long are you going to make those videos? How long are you going to write that book for? Things can maybe get stretched out way too long with this placement as well, because, um, again, it's ambitious, it's expansive, it's kind of radically full of desire, and it sometimes doesn't know when to quit, or it or it quits too soon. There's definitely an issue with the sign. Again, it's coming straight from Scorpio, so Sagittarius is the sign after Scorpio, obviously, so there's a little bit of a lesson about, like, when things die or when things end that can kind of make this a dark placement in its own way, where maybe it will never give up, or it will put something out of its misery too soon is also indicated. Also, this Venus sign can be quite prone to heartbreak too. So um, if they go through a breakup, it can be like a tough process for them because again, they they make things really big in their mind. Even sometimes maybe a small relationship or something that was quite casual or um, didn't have the same significance to the other person can be like this like turgid, huge, unrequited, like love affair for the Venus and Sagittarius. Um, so the other person doesn't realize it's so significant um, and they might just kind of disappear. And this can be something that turns this placement into into something that, is locked away sometimes. So this is kind of a weird thing that I've seen with Venus and Sagittarius people, because there's very, two very distinct types of people with Venus and Sagittarius. You know, either you have the like hyper successful, you know, hyper attractive star, or you have the sort of like wallflower, um, unsure, insecure, like um, thoughtful, philosophical person who's a little bit like shy. Okay, and this, of course, this depends on other placements in the chart, but um, oftentimes it's because they, they get scared of that spark within, you know, they get scared of that fire 
because maybe somebody broke their heart or they had a breakup or they didn't achieve what they wanted to achieve and they blow it out or they extinguish it. So it's really important for Venus and Sagittarius to keep that flame going and to translate it elsewhere because it's not, it doesn't even matter so much what Venus and Sagittarius chooses, whether it's like the music career or the corporate career or the homemaker career. What matters is that they go at it with like a million and a half percent and that's hard you know not everybody has to put in a million and a half percent to be successful this is a sign that can't really get away with like cutting corners i mean it can but it's not the goal we're talking about the goal oriented nature of this sign like it can cut corners and still maintain where it is because oftentimes it doesn't also receive punishment for what it does wrong it's lucky in that way um it can kind of like get away with um, a lot too so you know don't don't take that too far if you're a venus and sag listening to this and you're like oh i can just get away with anything not true but oftentimes they can like um cut corners and not be reprimanded um but again they don't get very far after that but I, but with the goal oriented thing in mind the ambitious aspect of this sign um you want to keep that so and you want to um enjoy the process of giving it all that you can give it and know when things have also finished as well no because that that's what the sagittarius energy always demands in an individual with a strong Sagittarius placement is you have to be keenly aware of when something is over. Because again, it's the sign right after Scorpio. It just learned all those lessons about death and endings and, and um, you know, transformations in life. So again, stagnant, stale energy is not um, well seen with this sign, okay? So it's something that will bring a lot of existential crisis or a lot of like pain more so than other people. So it has to be keenly aware of when the tide has turned and when it's time to move on from something, okay? And that's where they succeed the most is when they get that also philosophical understanding from that process. It's like, okay, I knew that this relationship ended, so I moved on. And, you know, I learned in that moment about, um, you know, how how adaptable I truly am and you know now I can put that into like politics and I can like campaign on the themes of like adaptability in like government or something there's like that transformational transitional philosophy that always gives them anything and that's just a hypothetical but that's really where this sign shines is being able to transmute um, also Venus and Aquarius is this way too but being able to transmute a problem into a, a profitable asset so good luck venus in sagittarius it's 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 like a it can be a bit of a manic venus sign. i'll end on this note for venus and sag it can be a bit manic and it can be a bit overwhelming and people can find it like a lot to take and kind of draining sometimes too so i always say that um with venus and sag you want to kind of like uh, sometimes tone it back know when that's know when that's appropriate know who you're dealing with again you are definitely um required to be adaptable a venus venus in a mutable sign is like adaptability is your best friend um so yeah i think that's all i'll talk about for venus and sag um yeah i think that that's pretty much covered it oh watch out for debt watch out for overspending try to keep track of your money again if you can like work through your saturn as a venus and sag that would be really good because this this type of placement does sometimes need to be offset by a frugal mind or a saturn placement because it can also like run up debts or spin too much or spin from its future or like want the really nice car so badly it's like it's beautiful you know like nice cars nice clothes nice homes like all of these things will tend to come to them you know again as long as you know saturn isn't horribly harsh harshly aspected with it um those things will typically be there but then they can like want more and more and more and more um so always good to maybe have a retirement fund or a very strict percentage that you're putting into savings because to offset it okay Okay, let's talk about Venus and Capricorn. Okay, Venus and Capricorn. So this is one of my favorite Venus signs because it's neither um, at home or debilitated, but it's typically like a really uh, wonderful energy to see in somebody. Um, I really enjoy speaking to these people because they have a wonderful eloquence about how they speak and also a nice kind of like salt of the earth, down to earth um, mentality about things as well. So this is one of the few Venus signs that can kind of avoid arrogance or avoid, um, you know, gassing themselves up in an inappropriate way. Um, they're very humble and um, typically very successful as well, and I think that that's a wonderful combination. So some of the most successful people in the world you will see have either Venus or Mars in Capricorn, because it does kind of say to some degree, like, I've known from birth that my place on this planet is not necessarily to just like 
sit and be idle. Like there's a big like uh, ambition or aspiration that this placement will tend to have, and they're very rewarded for following that instinct. Um, so yeah, you can definitely see people who are very renowned or prestigious in their field. This is the energy of Venus on the midheaven or Venus in the tenth house, um, naturally, regardless of where Venus is placed. So it gives luck and benevolence and comfort and beauty in thoughts of reputation, prestige, renown, and um, public connections. Like the other Venus Earth signs, there can be a lot of um, volatility. I won't even say volatility, but likely they might have experienced poverty at some point in time, and then they will likely also experience extreme wealth at some point in time. I see this with Moon or Venus in Capricorn, where um, through their maybe early experiences, whether those early experiences were in poverty or wealth, they really get maybe um, a want to experience the other side or to see things from the other from the other lens. So here you have maybe the very, very like poor person who wants to build their own company or wants to um, take something really big. On the other side, perhaps you have the person who's born into like the major upper class and they really want to live like more of a working class life or they want to marry somebody who is very much out of their own hierarchy, sort of like a Romeo and Juliet type of thing with this placement. Um, so oftentimes they come into contact with uh, people who are very different. Again, Venus in Capricorn kind of defies hierarchy in an interesting way. It's like a gift of this sign because, again, Capricorn is a hierarchy sign that deals with, you know, social class systems, social um, differences. Um, so the Venus energy softens those lines and blurs those lines. So you can see maybe the person who is, again, quite um, poor who's the best friend of like all the rich people and all the rich people want to have them like come over and like uh, visit their homes or something or likewise you can just the other way around or all variations of that venus kind of removes the boundaries a little bit um, especially if neptune is connected in some way of these very staunch capricorn status quo class definers I've noticed in Venus and Capricorn, there's also typically a great musical ability or poetry or writing, um, but especially music, like an instrument playing specifically, like singing can be a possibility, but um, they typically tend to be really good maybe at like playing the guitar or playing the piano or even like uh, some kind of, especially stringed instruments, they have an incredible um, affinity for. So the harp or violin or cello or piano or uh, guitar, they can really channel a lot of ethereal, magical energy through those practices. So it's great for them to spend time every day and to maybe make it into a really good routine. Like they can be really well-practiced musicians and really whatever they do, regardless of whether that's music or any other career, they need to be doing it always they need to like be very strict with their timing or very um practiced and regimented because the capricorn energy really rewards people who who um can be that way with themselves and have like routine and have diligence and it's a very diligent energy it's a very like um and they enjoy it it's not even like a sense of like oh my gosh i've got to go and practice now or i've got to go and like um do this and that and it's so repetitive it's like they wake up in the morning and fun fact this sign actually does really well with like waking up early so like their alarm clock doesn't necessarily phase them that much not all of them but it's an interesting thing if they're doing something they enjoy their their alarm clock is their best friend they love when their alarm clock goes off to some degree and they're ready to go if they're in something that they enjoy and that's really the key for this placement is what can you do that you don't despise the sound of your alarm clock with um, and that's when they know that that's the field for them or that's the sort of energetic outlay for them and it's that simple for them too they will encounter it at some point in time it doesn't really evade them basically um, they sort of always know I, I know what I'm meant to do I know what I'm meant to um, you know in a career form do and, and it will be super successful like wealth comes at the other end of those practice sessions or at with the sound of like every alarm it's like a raise or it's a possibility that comes in so regiment and magic kind of mix together in this placement and it's really beautiful so let's talk a little bit about love and relationships with venus and capricorn um this can be a bit more rocky <laughs> to a degree um they tend 
at some point in time, especially even later in life after the first Saturn returns, so after the age of 30, they tend to settle down or have a really long-term relationship of some kind um, and sort of accept it even if it's not perfect. This is a, definitely a placement for monogamy and long-term relationships. They won't feel very good about promiscuity or about... Um, being with many different people, it's very draining. There's something with their morals that doesn't really connect well with dating around. They don't really like dating culture. They don't really like um, even like large crowds is not the best thing either, unless they're performing or unless they have some kind of job or career connected to it. Um, but they won't necessarily love being in large crowds. And that, that could be different for some of them, especially if they've got like a Jupiter connecting to the Venus, where maybe, you know, they like to go to the fair or they like to go to some kind of carnival or some kind of um, social gathering and meet new people. That could be, but without that, it's mostly kind of socially anxious in a way and kind of like really likes to stay in. So the house is going to be really important. Again, this is the Cancer Capricorn axis. Cancer is the, um, the sign of home and hearth. And um, so this uh, on this axis, it will want to create a beautiful home. It will want to create, and I'm not, I mean, everybody wants a beautiful home, but this sign will want maybe many homes, multiple homes, multiple um, comfortable and homes that are just the way that they want them to be. There can be a control issue with the home with Venus and Capricorn. I will point that out. Um, they might be very particular about how the house is kept or about, you know, sometimes maybe if they're messy, for example, they might um, maybe kind of... Um, resent people who want to help them clean or want to like um, encourage them to clean. Likewise, if they keep a very clean house or if they're very um, perfectionist about the house, they can be very um, domineering to people if they like make a mess or um, or if or if they're not cleaning as well. So they can't they definitely are like the head of the household, the head of the family, the matriarch or patriarch of the family, the person who's like in control, probably has control of the purse strings as well and probably will be quite frugal too. That's an interesting thing about this Venus sign. Despite a lot of career success and an affinity for making money and the probability of having quite large sums of money, they will be very frugal and I suppose that that's how they um, keep it. You know, because Venus in Capricorn is definitely the energy of like old money, family money, um, how people maybe have uh, worked with money or thought about the concept of money maybe for generations or centuries, and that kind of comes down through them and they are a purveyor of that or they continue on in those more traditional ways of money philosophy. So um yeah, don't ask them for a loan. Um, I mean, you could, like, if you need it, like, they'd probably give it to you immediately. Here's the thing, like, if you ask for a loan from a Venus in Capricorn, they'll probably write you a check right then and there, but it's kind of um, taking you down a notch in their own mind, and you might see that they don't really ever welcome you in the same way ever again. Um, so there's kind of a very transactional nature about how they are in relationships too okay so in again in relationships they might think okay we're going to go on this date or we're going to have a child or whatever it is and that's a transaction and that's a almost maybe even like a contract around that um to me it feels like they can like uh proverbially like take concubines or it, it's like and that that's just a random channeling that came through like Venus and Capricorn, like it might really want to have heirs, especially the men. They might really want to have like male heirs, especially who can continue their last name or continue their bloodline. Um, so they might want to have a lot of children. Okay. And even like the women can be that way to a degree as well. They might want to have a lot of children or they might um, really want to have a big family and like really um, appointing family members or having managers who are family members, keeping things in the family, um, assigning each child a certain thing. Like maybe one child is getting a lot of teaching about money. Maybe another child's getting a lot of teaching about home care. Maybe another child's getting a lot of teaching about, you know, building a business. And it's sort of like covering all of their balances through their descendants is an interesting thing about this Venus sign. So especially if you have a Saturn or Pluto contact with Venus. Um, so yeah, that's Venus and Capricorn for you. That's a really interesting and kind of like um, unbeatable, <laughs> unbreakable energy. Um, so let's move on. Let's go into Venus in Aquarius. Okay, Venus in Aquarius. So this is like a very fun Venus sign. Is as always, Aquarius energy um, makes things very different, kind of turns everything on its head and... Um, 
gives us a bit of different energy of Venus. So again, as you heard from the preface of Venus, this is the planet that obviously deals with love, beauty, environment, prosperity. Um, so yeah, Aquarius is going to take that and it's going to turn that um, a bit more industrial or a bit more, um, what do I want to say, like automated in a way. So Venus energy becomes a bit more... Um, Hmm. it's not so much about what you pull in it's about like what you what you keep okay so what you're keeping in your space what you're transmuting as well um so that's abstract but in layman's terms venus in aquarius is going to indicate that the experiences that you have the um you know good bad and different experiences are going to become like an arsenal basically and they're going to be then be used for new things so if you go through a breakup or if you get married if you have kids whatever it is all of these experiences are going to become opportunities or um, potentialities for a new kind of success. So by going through a breakup, for example, as a Venus in Aquarius, you can turn that into um, an incredible book deal. Or, you know, as, you know, having kids as a Venus in Aquarius, you might see that you can um, start to connect to new people or, you know, through parenthood groups, maybe you um, make new connections that inspire you to start a new business and it changes your livelihood basically the key to thriving with a venus in aquarius is accepting eccentricity and um, enjoying the process of taking one solid experience and turning it into something profitable again there's kind of a midas touch here like i talked about with like venus and leo um because this is that access the aquarius leo axis um there's a midas touch okay so you see something you invest in it and it flowers and then you have to then know when it's flowered and when it will wilt as well so it's imperative for a venus and aquarius person to sort of have a bit of a formulaic mind and a bit of an understanding of when something has lived its time um, so you want to enjoy the flowers while they're blooming and then also be able to dispose of them or do with them what you will once they've wilted this sign can indicate um, maybe a rebellion against traditional relationship types um, you can maybe see a tendency towards polyamory in some cases with this venus not for all of them but um, basically anything that you associate with the status quo or anything you associate with like tradition will maybe seem a bit uh, problematic to venus and aquarius or seem like um there, there's a past with that or there's we've seen as venus and aquarius an error with the status quo or an error with tradition so now we want to see it from the other side of things and this can either be your like best friend or your worst enemy this whole concept of needing to see things from the other side or from the other perspective or from the um, sort of new way of being um, you will see that anything in extreme as an aquarius fixed air sign um, anything in extreme or in too much attention will become a problem and will become an error basically so just by understanding that as a venus in aquarius you can save yourself a lot of hassle where you might realize like okay in my household as a venus in aquarius maybe my very traditional parents had a very abusive relationship so now i want to embrace a relationship type that's not traditional because maybe that will heal those wounds and then you see the errors of that as well so there's kind of like venus in aquarius two degrees walking through it's receiving a lot of errors or a lot of um you know uh ways that things are not typical okay seeing how things are not typical seeing the the outliers the outcasts the the people who are not um traditional parts of society so yeah you might attract like the bad boy or the bad girl type of energy around you you might attract the um you know the corrupt banker or the um or the person who is like um doing something that's not quite legal but to heal people or something you know there's a lot of like weird little conditions that venus and aquarius can attract in that is very um just not seen by anybody else so you might also be like privy to information that other people don't know um perhaps like studying foreign languages could be good or being an investigator or um you know even like a computer there's a lot of computer programmers as a career for venus and aquarius 
or people who work in like software design or technology or um, you know any field like that that will do well because you you might also like be really passionate about like computers or technology or energy as well. Um, so any of those sectors are really successful for Venus and Aquarius. And, and honestly, what you can see with Venus and Aquarius sometimes is like asexuality or people who are um, not really even interested in a relationship. That can be sometimes, especially if there's like a Saturn or a Neptune contact. Um, they might not even really actively seek a relationship. Um, and they might be very disconnected also from, um, you know, lower urges or anything like that. Um, so that's possible. Not not for all Venus and Aquarius, but that is where, that's typically where you see those themes in astrology. Um, so, but when, sometimes you will also get Venus and Aquarius who then, um, after some time, want something quite traditional or want something... Um, you know, to, to go back to the status quo, but what they have to do is they have to keep it humorous. Um, this is an important placement for humor and for laughter and for um, detaching from, again, the standard, all right? So if you, as a Venus in Aquarius, find yourself in what might be seen as a very typical, you know, status quo, standard, traditional uh, circumstance, um, it will be really important to integrate some kind of odd humor or doing something that nobody else really does within that, uh, just to keep it a little bit your own. So what we deal with at the root of that is a Venus and Aquarius is ownership, okay? It's a big theme. What do I own? What do I have? This is the Leo Aquarius axis. So Leo is the energy that like crowns itself and it says, okay, I, I own the kingdom. I own all of these things. These are my subjects. So Aquarius will also get that tinge of energy as well, where it's like, what do I own? Nothing. Where, where <laughs> You know, it's like the opposite, um, but it still deals with that energy line. Um, so Owning things can actually be really good for Venus and Aquarius, like owning land, owning property, owning a house. And they might convince themselves that they never want to be tied down because it also likes to travel, it likes to be in the air, it likes to see new things. But um, it will kind of see that there's nothing in that because it doesn't really own it. It's like an experience, so it can't really be real or owned. So I would definitely recommend as a Venus and Aquarius after the first Saturn return, so after you're about 30 years old, you want to own something by then. You want to have something that is just yours and something that um, makes you happy because then you can really get creative with it and do it in a different way. Um, again, this is kind of a hard one to interpret for. Every Venus and Aquarius is very different. You know, they're kind of like snowflakes. Like every single one is different for the Venus and Aquarius people. <laughs> um, so you have like, re it's really not something that's so super definable, but that's that's the my general thought toward Venus and Aquarius. Um, so I will leave that there. Um, okay, Venus in Pisces. So I love Venus in Pisces. Why do I love it? It's probably one of my other favorite Venus signs. Emotionally aware, and it's not afraid of like the emotional environment of a situation. Um, so Venus in Pisces gives a great affinity for um, taking an emotional environment or having an emotional experience that makes you feel wonderful. So obviously, First off, we think of like, okay, you know, being told that we're loved, being told that we've done well. These are like nice emotional experiences um, or, or, you know, seeing something really beautiful that, that inspires us. Um, also, Venus in Pisces has a great way um, of coping with pain or coping with loss. So going through a breakup or being uh, criticized or being um, put in a difficult situation actually shows itself with a bit of immunity with Venus in Pisces. Um, earlier on in life, specifically in like the teenage years and early adulthood, there can be really strong um, insecurity or really strong um, fear or even self-fulfilling prophecies, that type of thing. But usually right when they get into like the, the clout of their adulthood, they have a great ability to find a niche and to start to see any what may have been difficult emotions from the past become something that they can really um, feed off of and use to their advantage in the future. So you can see a bit of emotional vampirism with this placement, but um, it's almost just like right for them in a way. like So like not being vampiristic towards other people, but they will to a degree feed off of their own emotions and... Um, kind of like Venus and Aquarius and Venus and Sagittarius, they will uh, transmute those emotions into some other realm of reality. So again, like I said, with those signs, you can, you know, take that breakup or take that heartbreak and turn that into the best selling book or turn that into the, you know, a great album or the um, incredible painting. This is an incredibly, incredibly artistic placement. 
This is also a lucky Venus placement because, again, Jupiter traditionally ruled Pisces, and whenever you put one of Jupiter's signs into um, Venus, it indicates great luck, great prosperity, great benevolence, and sort of a lottery type of energy. So um, even if they encounter hard times, something naturally will pull them out of it. They will, they're kind of, you know, for example, if you see in like um, existential storytelling, you know, maybe it's sort of like a purgatorial theme where you have this like protagonist or the antagonist and they both like um suffer horrible fates and then there are those side characters that are like involved in it all but never get affected by any of it this is kind of like venus and pisces like they might be involved in really difficult stories but it doesn't really they're not like in the roles that actually suffer the consequences basically so there's like a slipperiness with this energy where these people are like um uh, kind of just drifting through, you know, and quite lucky when it comes, like maybe they are actually the mastermind in the story, or maybe maybe they've kind of created or constructed or, or unknowingly construed a lot of disasters for other people, but they don't really get much accountability for that. So in its negative, this Venus placement really struggles with accountability and really struggles with showing up to... Um, you know, be accountable with apologizing, with accepting fault, with um, anything that shows like, um, you know, them as like the protagonist or the antagonist, you know, the person in the story that like matters. They can kind of be afraid of the limelight or afraid of the spotlight or afraid of shifting into those roles because they know at an instinctual level that those are the people who get the fate. Those are the people who are connected to fate. And here we see with Venus in Pisces, um, mortality, issues of mortality definitely come up because Pisces is the last sign. It is the true ruler of the death energy. Um, so Venus in Pisces indicates that there are a lot of lessons around mortality that are coming through and most likely in a, um, comfortable way you know as comfortable as a topic like that can be you know that's the thing about venus and pisces is what they have to experience is not really something that comfortable can apply to but it's venus so it becomes somewhat like enjoyable so you like they're I don't remember what this YouTube channel is called, but there's some YouTube channel that like talks about the theme of death and like she um she like really makes it something that's not scary and to me it's a little bit much but um uh, this is like a venus in pisces i would imagine or somebody who has this type of placement where um death becomes a major like uh can be a, like an addictive thought so these people might be obsessed with watching horror movies or obsessed with watching um people die in film or something or uh desensitization can also come with this venus placement but not necessarily this isn't for all of them but they have to watch out for getting desensitized to things and getting um especially with cinema and media and screens and or like gaming or anything that is like because pisces and neptune rule gaming cinema hollywood tv all of these things youtube even so um, what you're watching right now, you're kind of engaged in a Pisces energy to a degree. Um, you know, when you clicked on this video, when you clicked on this timestamp, you're um, going through the Piscean energy of being able to like interact with me, a person that you have n no connection with, but like we're connecting in a way and it's not really, and then you'll click away and it'll be, that'll be that. Um, so this is Pisces energy and they can be really like connected to this type of thing. They could maybe be a good YouTuber or they could... Um, really appeal on social media or but most likely they kind of like to keep their they like to keep themselves beneath the surface and and maybe even off the grid or away from others okay so that's been a really random channeling on venus and pisces let's talk more specifically about their career so again careers in like um anything that deals with an ending um so divorce lawyer being a divorce lawyer could be really good for venus and pisces um not super indicated but i mean they would be good at it um being a mortician being a um uh, a mortgage 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 is also like mortician it has that same root so dealing in finance dealing in mortgage dealing in debt is indicated with a venus in pisces um but more specifically probably being married to someone who deals with those things is also more so indicated because again venus talks about um the assets or resources that we discover through relationships or marriage um with venus in pisces you have uh, luck. You have luck when it comes to uh, joint assets and um, 
and anything relating to like family money, inheritance, anything like that is typical and most likely lucky unless you have an afflicted Saturn aspecting the Venus. Um, so that should be good if any of you are worried about that. Um, uh, so for love specifically with Venus and Pisces, um, the, the thing is, is there's a bit of a sadness around the topic of love and relationships because once you've made it official or you've gotten married or proclaimed yourself, you know, in a relationship, it kind of dies in a way. And that's okay. That has to be okay, Venus and Pisces, because again, the Venus and Pisces experience um, makes love enjoyable, even if it's not really thriving anymore, basically. Um, so you want to watch out for being too connected to like a thriving relationship because there's probably a lot to be done personally, okay? And sometimes a relationship can really distract us from that. So Venus and Pisces, one of the karmic trajectories is that of being in a relationship that's not really thriving or living anymore. Um, so maybe walking away from that is best. And there will be people or opportunities to have like thriving relationships. Don't let that a pattern of words freak you out. But um, just remember that as a Venus in Pisces, um, you're kind of untouchable and there are a lot of benefits that come about as through this placement. And a lot of those benefits come from the fact that you're so slippery and that, um, you know, people don't really think of going against you or think of making you an opponent or think of making you an enemy. It's hard for people to make you an enemy or it's hard for people to um, maybe strike back against you or you know, victimize you in any way. Um, so you kind of avoid victim mentalities and you avoid victimizations. You avoid, um, you know, lawsuits a lot of the time. If any of that is like ever coming up, that tends to go favorably for Venus and Pisces. Um, but basically you just want to um, be thankful for those things and, and enjoy like a project or enjoy art. So Pisces is an art sign. Venus is money, wealth, what we love, beauty, all of that. So Art may be the central theme of your life as a Venus in Pisces, and that is an incredible lifetime to lead. And speaking of leading, it might be really interesting for you to be in a position of leadership or to lead people into greater emotional expansion or um, leading people into acceptance of themselves. I feel like Pisces can, Venus and Pisces can really appeal to people and really like make people cry. Like it's like people sit down with you and you're not even talking about anything too heavy, or maybe you've talked about something difficult for the first time with them and there it sort of pulls out their emotions or it pulls out their deeper feelings. So there's a great gift there, you know, there's a great gift in being able to appeal to the emotions of others. And you want to use that in a high way because there's a manipulative capacity there, but then there's also um, a really great ability to heal others and to be known for that. Okay. And when you're that type of person in a Venus and Pisces way, um, oftentimes you can then be pretty untouchable in a lot of other ways. So, um, be that for people if you can. There is a sense of duty. Always with Pisces energy, there's a sense of duty. Like you might not get recompensated or you might not, it might not really be something like where you then feel super emotionally satisfied, but there's like a duty within it that you feel really behind basically. Um, so finding hidden purpose, finding different types of purpose than most people, um, inspiration, motivation, and uh, enjoyment of life, love of life, love of the journey, love of the path, love of source energy. This is all a great gift for this Venus sign. So anyway, thank you so much for taking the time to check out this Venus in astrology video. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and comment below what your Venus sign is or um, what you thought of it or anything you would like to add about um, any of the stuff we talked about here today. Thank you so much everyone for uh, coming by and sitting through this uh, long video or just checking out your sign however it went. If you liked it, check the description box below. I'm on Patreon. You can get a channel membership by hitting the join button. Um, this is a two hour video. It is um, a huge undertaking to put out. Um, so if you thought it resonated, it would be awesome if you would like to maybe send a tip or a contribution or just hit the subscribe button. That is always enough as well. So thank you so much, everyone. We will be talking soon. Much love. Bye.